Welcome back to another episode of Elevate. Um, in this particular series, we are talking about the art of following. My name is Ivan Blessed Muhumuza Amoti. I'm really, really excited that you tuned in. And I know you're going to be blessed by this message because I believe this is a message that has changed and flipped my life completely. And I believe it's going to do the same for you. So welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I'd like to invite us to pray. Uh, and then we'll get started. Please share the link. Invite as many people to it. Because I tell you, this message is changing many, many lives. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Today, um, we receive grace as we listen to your word. Open our ears. Open our hearts, Lord. Open our eyes. May we receive everything you have for us in the word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we are talking about following. And last week we read a scripture, uh, an anchor scripture for this time. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22, and in Mark chapter 1, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It says, uh, where well, we are talking about Jesus. And in here it says, And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, this is Jesus speaking to them, he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. And uh, going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. Baba says he called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. So following, we're talking about the truth that the highest form of training, the highest form of learning, the highest form of becoming someone or something is following. When Jesus thought about how he would transform these guys, the, f the thing he could think of, and this is the wisdom of God, okay, it's the wisdom of God, he thought about following. And we define following as coping. Yeah, emulating someone, coping someone. They put up their right hand, you put up their right hand, your right hand. Left hand, left hand. It's, 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 it's the art. It's the art of coping someone. And I was trying to belabor the point last week that um, you become you become who you follow. That the person that you are today is a product of various people you have followed. If you're an engineer, it is because you followed a certain engineer. If you're a doctor, it's because you followed a doctor. If, if, if you're married, it's because there is someone who is married that you followed. It is not your original idea. This whole thing of original, original, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Yeah. We all just stand on the shoulders of other people. We all emulate other people. That is how we become the people that we are. If you don't want to follow anyone, then you have kissed goodbye to becoming anything. Yeah. And I was telling you about children and how, uh, and how um, the children learn by following. And so you can learn many things by just following. You know, following, I thought about a statement that followership will do for you many things that gifting and talent can never do for you. Followership will do for you many things that gifting and talent can never do for you. You know these guys, they are not talented preachers. These disciples, they are not gifted preachers. Actually, in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, the, the Bible says when they met them, when certain people met them, the Bible says that they realized that these guys were untrained and uneducated men. Let me find that scripture for you. Untrained and uneducated. The Bible says, Acts 4.13, that now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, these are the guys God called. Jesus called. The Bible says, when, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, 
they were not educated according to the order of the Jewish scribes, Pharisees, all those religious demagogues of those days who had to go through, I don't know many things. But anyway, even those people followed someone because for you to become a rabbi, you had to sit under the training and teaching of another rabbi to become that rabbi. But these were fishermen. They didn't go to the ordinary schools in the synagogue to become what they became. But the Bible says that they perceived that they were uneducated and and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. The thing that had changed them completely wasn't their gifting or their talent or their whatever. It was their following. It is because they followed Jesus that they were preaching, that they were performing miracles. Jesus was a preacher. They were preachers. Jesus was performing miracles. They were performing miracles. Jesus walked on water. Peter walked on water. Jesus loved people. They loved people. Jesus healed sick people. Jesus built the church. They were building the church. Some of them even followed Jesus all the way into the way he died. They were crucified, albeit upside down. They sacrificed their lives because they followed someone who was that. You will become the person you follow. And following will do for you a lot more. A lot more than gifting can. You know, when you're driving and you're going somewhere and you don't know where you're going and you have a lead car in front of you, my dear, you will get there not because you knew where you were going but because you were following someone. So the person just says, get in the car, sit in your car, follow me. The car is yours, but you are following the speed of the person ahead of you. You are trying to make sure you don't lose sight of them. When they turn right, you turn right. When they turn left, you turn left. When they pick up speed, you pick up speed. When they stop, you stop. It is because you don't know where you are going and you are trying as much as possible to follow someone who has been there and knows where they are taking you. Now, they can't turn right and you turn left. If they turn right and you turn left, then you are going your own direction. You're going to get lost there. You won't reach your destination. So following is a very high form. You know, Jesus followed people. For him to become who he is. You see, Jesus never preached his sermons. In, the, in, in Luke 4, 18, the, the scripture, when he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty those who are oppressed by the devil. You see, that scripture is in Isaiah 61. He just went and got the words of the prophet Isaiah and repeated them word for word. Following. And he keeps refraining and he says that the son of man can do nothing. I have to read you that scripture. (laughs) I have to read you that scripture. A son of man can do nothing. I am finding it. You are about to find it. Yeah. In John. Chapter 5, verse 19. This is Jesus, the Son of God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, this is John 5, 19. Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. The Son can do nothing of himself. Jesus could do nothing of himself. At all, at all. (laughs) He says, But what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, for whatever the Father does, the Son also does in like manner. What a blessing. Whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Jesus followed. Jesus copied. 
You see, those of us that think that coping is underrated, it is what I have to be my own. Think about Jesus, the greatest person on earth. He followed, he copied, he emulated his father. He emulated some of the prophets. He read their scriptures. He preached their sermons. He didn't have to come up with new sermons all the time. He preached their sermons. It is the art of following. It is the way people make great leaps in life. It is the way people surge forward quickly. It is by following. All musicians use a certain number of notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Plus some of the notes that are in there. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. There are seven notes. Major ones. Plus the minors. One, two, three, four, five. All music is within those notes. You see, you, you cannot come up and say, now me, I'm coming up with a different set of musical notes. No, the notes are the same from, from before time began. So the only way people are able to produce music is they start by following. It all starts by following, by copying someone. And I'm not saying that you don't have to innovate. No, the, it's a form of learning. You imitate before you innovate. You don't skip to innovation before you imitate people. And imitation is the greatest way you learn. Your innovation will just be a little bit. Imitation is like 90% of your learning. The innovation it could be like 10 or even 5% of the person that you are, of the person that we can become. It is simply by following. F look, following will change your life. It will change your life. Jesus meets these guys. <laughs> Jesus meets these guys. And he tells them, follow me. Of course, you're asking yourself. Hmm? I won't give you two so I want us to talk about following and following God because Jesus followed God, okay? And I believe God calls us to follow him. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, the, the Bible encourages us and says that be ye followers of God as dear children. Do I want us to talk a, a bit about following God? I hope we'll finish. If we don't, we'll continue with it next time. He says, be ye followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. I'm reading from the KJV and hath given himself for us as an offering, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. God invites us to follow him. God invites us to be like him. God invites us to love like him. God invites us to create like him. That's why the Bible says that you and I are created in the image of God. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God, when God was creating us, he created us to emulate him, to copy him, to become like him. Not to become God, but to become gods with small g. To create like him. To speak words that are created. Because he, cre he spoke words to create the world. And all your words as well create your world. And so God invites us to follow him. God invites us to be like him. It is our greatest honor to become like God. And so Paul here is saying, be ye followers of God. I should read you another scripture in Psalm 63. A prayer that, uh, a prayer that, that David makes. I hope, I hope we are following. And I hope we are 
enjoying enjoying this this portion i think it's psalm 63 let me try psalm 63 psalm 63 psalm 63 it should be the one let me let me just read the nkjv uh, la, 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 la. I don't seem to find the scripture, but I'll find it. But the thing I'm trying to emphasize is that God invites us. Ah, right here. It is what it's what David says, Psalm 63, um, verse 8, where he says, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. This is what soul, this is what David did. He was saying that my soul follows hard after you. Like I do everything to follow hard after you. I can tell you if this was the desire of every man, if this was the cry of every human being, if this was the ultimate thing for every man, our worlds would be completely different. Because when you follow God, and again, I'll show you how we follow people and how we can follow well. But the thing I'm trying to emphasize is that God invites us to follow him. That's a scripture in Ephesians chapter 5, 1 to 2. That be ye followers of God. But you know, you cannot follow a God you have never seen. Mm. You cannot follow a God you have never truly, truly seen. When God wants you to follow him, he will send you men that you need to follow. When God wants you to become like him, he will send you men that you need to become. You can be successful in the art of following by copying a man or a woman who is following God. That's what Paul instructed the church in Corinth. In 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, he told them, be ye followers of me even as I follow Christ. Be ye followers of me, even as I follow Christ. He told them, you can always follow me as long as I am following Christ. Yeah. So I'm here to, to, to first tell you that you cannot claim that you follow God if you don't follow a man or a woman that God has sent before you. Because th then how do you do it? It is like saying, let's assume God is uh, the hydroelectric power generating plant. Okay, that is where God is. He's that massive. He has a lot of electricity. And say you are a phone that needs to charge. And you want to get some power. Okay, you want to follow God. Do you think it is wise for you to grab your phone and your charger and go to the turbines where the power is being generated or, or the windmill or, or the solar panels or the nuclear power plant and then you plug your charger in there to charge your phone? I can tell you what is going to happen to you. You're going to blow up. Yeah. You will blow up. Your phone will not charge. Yeah. If you're the phone, you will just blow up because the current is too much for you to handle. It will just blow up your phone. It is wisdom for you to know that the power has been extended to you. The voltage has been stepped down to suit the needs that you have in the house. And if you need to charge the phone, you just get your charger and you plug it in the socket. And your phone will charge. You will charge and you will be happy. And you can always come and plug it in. Now in the picture I am trying to show you, if God is the hydropower generating plant, then the men and women of God he has sent your way are the sockets. And you're the phone. You need to plug into the socket. It is not wise for you to claim you have you, 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 you will go and get the power from the power plant. And so it is not wise for you to claim you are following God if you are not following a man. If you're not following a person who is following Christ, 
then you cannot claim to follow God. Do you realize that when Jesus called these people in Matthew chapter 4, these people didn't know that Jesus was the son of God. Because Peter finds out later. Peter finds out later in Matthew 16. And he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He finds out much later. At this point, they just they are just fishing. They're going about their business and they see a man. And, they, and this man calls them and tells them, follow me. I'll make you become fishers of men. I don't know whether they, they had not seen him perform any miracle. Nothing. They, you know, following is a walk of faith. And the Bible says the just shall live by faith. They didn't know where he stayed. They didn't know what his, where he came from. They didn't know his parents. They didn't know his what. But they took a chance and followed him. That's why their names are etched in heaven. Because they took a chance on a man. You see, when we talk about Jesus right now, for you, of course, you're thinking about him in the resurrected manner after he has performed all these miracles. By the time he's telling them to follow him, he has done nothing. He is a man who is following God. And of course, there must have been a witness in their hearts. Maybe their hearts burned within them when he asked them to follow him. But they were willing to take the risk and follow Jesus. Today, I, there's a thing I want you to know is that God wants you to follow him. God wants to turn you into a great person. You see, I told you of the person I'm following, Apostle Moses Mokisa. How he came on campus to preach. And then I decided to follow him because he's following God. And of course, one of the issues you, you, you're battling with is that eh, men are not perfect. Men are not perfect. I, I'm about to address that one. But I started following Apostle Moses. I started reading the Bible the way he reads it. I started trying to preach the way he preaches. I went and wrote down all his sermons. I listened to his sermons every day for me to become a bit like him because I desire to become like him. He's a great man of God. I desire to be like him. I, on my phone, even the sermon I'm teaching you right now, much of it, the words, they may be from different sermons, but many of them are from his sermons. If you go and listen to him preaching, you realize that I'm using many of his examples, many of his lines. And you are enjoying the sermon. <laughs> I'm teaching online right now because he teaches online. I write songs because he writes songs. I preach because he preaches. I try and emulate everything he does because I think he's a great, great, great man of God. And if I want to follow God, I pray a certain number of hours because he, he prays a certain number of hours. There is a time he invited us to pray for five hours straight. I know God is leading him. And so I am following God as I follow him. And I am not saying that as you follow a man, you negate your practices, your disciplines of prayer, reading the word. It is, no. But you can follow a man. You can only follow God by following a man. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You see, James, John, Peter, Andrew, they didn't know that by following Jesus, they were following God. They found out much later that, look, this is the son of God. And so they started following, following. Child of God, you are out there. You need to begin following someone. You need to humble yourself and begin following someone. You need to plug into a spiritual family and begin following someone. If you're in a family, you know proximity doesn't guarantee following. Just because you're close doesn't mean you're following. There are people who are close to Jesus in his time that never followed him. I mean, when Jesus called these guys, their fathers were there, but they never followed. Ah, many things are even coming to mind. Following is a privilege. Being invited to follow is a privilege. Because you know, out of all the millions of people, Jesus didn't invite everyone. He invited specific people to follow him. But anyway, I was saying that proximity doesn't guarantee following. You can be in a place, you can be in a church, you can be in a spiritual family and there is a person God has clearly told you to follow and you don't follow them. 
and you don't copy what they are doing. Like I told you, following is copying. Don't get confused about it. It's just copying someone. Can you imagine copying God by copying the people he has sent you? Can you imagine what your life would be like? Can you imagine what your finances would be like? Can you imagine what your ministry would be like? Can you imagine what your marriage would be like? Can you imagine what your relationship, what your speech would be like? Friends, like I said, I can talk about this until tomorrow. But today, I need you to know that God is inviting you to follow. God is inviting you to follow him. God is inviting you to follow him by you following the people he sends your way. The people he sends your way. A great book I recommend about this topic is the book The Art of Following by Bishop Doug Edward Mills. It's a really wonderful book. You should read it. It will bless your soul. He, he delves more into the details of it. We can catch extra sermons on the Worship Harvest platforms where Apostle Mose talks about following. Yeah, Because I want you to become something. I want you to become a big, significant person. And I can tell you this is a key to your elevation. Following is a key to your elevation. Until you follow, you won't be elevated. Because you, because you can't elevate yourself, someone has to elevate you. And it all comes by following. We'll continue with this topic next week. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, may God bless you as you follow. May God elevate you as you follow. May God turn your heart to learn to follow and emulate people who are following Christ so you can follow them as well. If you're not yet born again, the first step to following God is receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So I'd like to pray for you today so you can receive Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Today I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Take my life, fill me with the Holy Spirit, and do something significant in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, you are born again. Welcome to the family of God. Like you, I'd like to invite you to contact us on the number running on your screen so we can plug you into a spiritual family if you don't have one, so we can know that you got saved, so we can pray for you, so we can walk this journey of life in Christ with you. God bless you so much. Have yourselves a wonderful, fruitful day. See you in the next episode as we continue talking about the art of following.